Do electrical engineers need to know any programming? One of the biggest misconceptions that I'm seeing is that people think that it's all or nothing when it comes to coding. Either you spend a lot of your time doing it or you'll do none at all. And the reason we all got into electrical engineering in the first place is because we didn't want to go down the computer science route or even the computer engineering route where you're so focused on understanding how computers work. No, we went into electrical engineering because we wanted to design. So in this video, we'll talk about which roles require minimal coding, which ones have a moderate coding requirement and which ones are heavy coding and what industries you can find those roles in. We'll also talk about which languages you should focus on if you really want to dive into it. And finally, I'll bring up vibe coding and how these new AI assistants have changed the landscape. Let's break it down. For minimal, the clear examples are being a field engineer. And that could mean that you're working in the power industry, working as a, a substation engineer. Maybe you're on the construction side or maybe you're on the quality side of various different industries you might be the one that's testing. So in those cases, you're most likely not going to be using much coding at all. That's a very obvious example. But let's say that you're on the design side of some of these things. And let's say that you're a substation designer in the power industry. Well, you might have some Boolean logic, you might have to understand how logic works when it comes to relays, you might set relays, things of that nature. So at the very most, you might get into if then statements and understanding how the logic is all tied in very far from what I would call code coding. You might be asked to understand how some of that works, but not necessarily write the code. The most that you might have to do is write up some Excel macros or something or other to just automate some mundane tasks that you're doing. So that's a minimal type example. Roles that have a more moderate exposure to coding include things like getting into PLCs or microcontrollers, embedded systems, things of that nature. You're going to have to dive a little bit deeper into your programming knowledge. The thing is, it's moderate because those things are still tied to hard hardware so that you're sort of in between. But at the end of the day, you're not creating software products, you are still programming hardware devices. So you could be controlling machines or tuning systems or processing signals, but you're not making software products. And on the far end, you've got roles in signal processing, AI, robotics, research. And this is where you are really living in C++, MATLAB, Python, and you're the people that are creating the tools that everyone else in your industry is going to use. So those those would be heavy type roles and they do exist. However, I would say that probably most electrical engineers do not fall in this one. If I had to pick, I would say that most are in the low to moderate impact it really depends on the industry that you're in and what role you want to do. So wherever you are on that spectrum, it doesn't really matter how much code you write. All that matters is are you able to logically think through how this is going to affect the physical systems that you're building? So which languages should you actually learn as an electrical engineer? If you've gone through the university program here in the US, then you probably studied MATLAB. MATLAB is definitely on this list. Now, before I go any further, I should say that you don't have to know 10 different languages. All you really need is one or two. And the most important thing is to understand the syntax. How does the language work, right? What are the parameters that require these languages to work? And if you can understand the syntax of even one of them, it makes it all easier to learn a second language. Now, MATLAB is still a powerhouse in research, signal processing. And next up is Python. And this is the one that I believe that electrical engineers should focus in on if they can only learn one. It's really used everywhere. It's, it's the workhorse language. And if you need to take a data set and create some tables out of it or, or reimagine it a different way, Python is the way to go. So I've seen junior engineers use Python to speed up a process in the substation design software that I use, which is currently MicroStation. And they were able to speed up an arduous task that we would have to do every time we would update our drawings. And that saved so many hours per project. So they made a name for themselves just by using Python to automate these seemingly small tasks. But the thing is, think about it. If you multiply it out, if you save five hours every single project on this and you do a hundred projects a year, that's a ton of time, right? Companies and businesses see this as increased value that you've added. So if you've saved now, say 500 hours per year, well, you know what, you might be billing that rate out. That's a huge bonus. That's the power of just learning a little bit of the software. And also the biggest thing is you have to start thinking how to use this software, how to use these tools. So Python is a great one. And in my opinion, should be the one that everybody should learn if you're going to learn
learn only one. One up is C or C++. If you're working closer to hardware, so think microcontrollers, motor drives, things of that nature. If you need to program these devices, then C or C++ will be the one that you most likely will have to use. So as you can see, all the ones that we've mentioned, it really depends on which roles you're in. And the final one I wanna mention is if you're making any graphics user interfaces or anything of that nature, you're probably gonna involve yourself in with SQL or JavaScript. You'll be able to pull data and build dashboards for the engineering systems in your company. Just learn the one that's the most relevant for your field and the industry that you've entered, right? That should be a goal of yours. If you're starting out your career, make one tool that can save any bit of time and you will stand out beyond belief. This will be more value added to your company and to yourself than any certification or letters after your name that you could ever have. That will go very far in building your reputation and building a name for yourself. And that's priceless, really. Now, I wanna bring up a concept that's been made popular recently by Andre Karpathy, and that is vibe coding. If you haven't heard about it, where have you been? Living under a rock? This AI thing is happening, and that's why all the computer science majors are all in, in tears right now, because they're trying to figure out what their careers are gonna look like. The vibe coding thing is an incredible idea, right? You have all these tools now, right? Like GitHub Copilot to name one, Google AI Assistant to name another, and all these softwares that we've mentioned, they all have their own assistants now. There's even Base44 where you can create applications, and that really hits home because when I was a junior engineer, a buddy of mine and I decided to start making phone apps on the side on uh, for iPhone, and oh gosh, we would spend a ton of time trying to figure out how to code and do all these things. We eventually ended up hiring a company that would develop the app and program it, and we would just work on the business side of it. That was a 10 years ago. It's amazing how far these things have come. And we every time we had a change, we had to go to this company and tell them, oh, we want to make these changes. So now with vibe coding, you can sort of type in what you want the application to do, and it can spit out the code for you or the graphic user interface or whatever tool or game you want to build, right? Even ChatGPT can do this now. It's incredible. So really all of these tools that we've mentioned have these assistants. So now what tools can I build using all of these AI assistants that will help me in my task and in my role. That's the way you want to start thinking about it. So that's really the power of vibe coding. It bridges the gap between hardware and software and allows you to be kind of the mastermind of this whole system. It gives you a massive head start. So really, this is where I see the future of engineering and AI starting to come together. So ultimately, the AI will not replace electrical engineers. Learn how to become an architect of the systems that you're trying to build. So in the future, it's going to be less about typing code and all these languages that we discussed. It'll be more about directing all of this power and intelligence that we have behind us that we've built in with these AI systems. I'll be honest with you, in my 10 years working as an electrical engineer, I've barely written any code. Now, it's not that I haven't learned or that I haven't dabbled. It's just that for the type of work that I do, and I would say that most electrical engineers do, you don't have to know that much code. I've built systems, I've worked on large power infrastructure projects, I've managed engineering teams, and nowhere can I say in that path has the ability to know how to program or write code been a hindrance to us achieving our goals. However, there have been individuals along the way that have used the power of programming and understanding a language to build tools that have made the job that I do easier. And here's the truth, you don't have to be a master programmer to be valuable. You just have to understand enough and know how to read the syntax in order to make a difference. So you have to understand how programming and the code fits into your system and the role that you're providing. 10, 20 years ago, you could spend your entire career wiring up panels and doing things by hand even and never opening up software, let alone any code editor. Now everything is built in on software and that software and those tools run on code. So you might not just be designing circuits, you're also designing the logic behind it. Where does that leave us? If you're a younger person now in your 20s and 30s, even in your teens, if you're watching this, you want to be sure that you are staying on top of everything that's going on and using these tools and not pushing them away and not being a, a miser and just kind of going into your shell and not embracing it. You want to embrace these tools. And really, when AI starts integrating deeper into engineering tools, as it already has in the past two years, you'll know how to speak its language because you're already thinking like that and you've learned how the language works. 
So really, what is it? Knowing how to code gives you some leverage. That's the key. Even though we're not programmers, it's still important to understand. So if you want to see where you stand right now, I've actually built a free AI assessment for engineers. And after answering a few questions, it'll tell you how ready you are for this next wave of AI technology that's coming into the play. And it'll also give you some pointers on what you can do next in order to get yourself ready if you're falling behind. So check that out. There'll be a link for it in the description. It's a fun little quiz. And finally, don't wait for this new wave of technology to come through and you get left behind. Start experimenting now. Start playing with all these tools that are at your disposal. See what your company is open to having you try. There are certain industries that have top secret clearances and things of that nature. So they'll have their own requirements. So don't do anything foolish, but be the one on the forefront that can start to use and build these tools. That's going to make a difference, not only for you, but for your company. And those are the engineers that are going to succeed in the future. And it's that mindset that says that I can learn this because no matter where you are in your journey, you were a student at some point. And that's really what keeps engineers valuable and needed and in control of their careers.